Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. I've done this for a long time. I've been in draft and developed since 2006. And the goal is always to keep 69 to 70 of these guys. You know, obviously the third quarterback, you know, now plays into that. So, um, and, it, and it's a chess match. And, it, and, it, and it's these are conversations that, you know, uh, you know, you don't look forward to having because uh, when you look look a young man in the eye and, and you know he's done everything you asked him to do and and he definitely has earned uh, opportunity to be on the 53 and you don't you don't have the right enough spots based off how you think this whole thing's going to evolve. By today's 3 p.m. deadline, the NFL teams had to finalize their initial 53-man rosters. Pretty accurate head coach Mike McCarthy calling it a chess match. Now, as we know, the Dallas Cowboys' Ezekiel Elliott era is over, and here's what the running back room sounds like after today's cuts. Tony Pollard, Rico Dowdle, Deuce Vaughn, and Hunter Lipke. Most of that group earning a spot with standout performances in the preseason. Amid the cut downs, the Dallas Cowboys swapped cornerbacks with Miami. Dallas is sending Kelvin Joseph to the Dolphins for a 2020 first round pick. Noah Igbonogany. The Cowboys also cut two former draft picks in defensive tackle Quentin Bohanna and linebacker Jabril Cox. The Houston Texans handling business under first year head coach D'Amico Ryans. The Texans did cut former Pro Bowl cornerback Desmond King in the process of finalizing their 53 man roster. Houston also making a move amid cuts to help the O line with the acquisition of former 2021 third round pick Kendrick Green in exchange for a 2025 six round pick to the Steelers. San Antonio native Kellen Mond was unfortunately on the Cleveland Browns list of cuts. Mond was waived last week, but the Browns brought him back after trading Joshua Dobbs to the Cardinals. Mond was beat out by Dorian Thompson Robinson for the backup role behind Deshaun Watson. This Saturday, the UTSA football team travels to Houston for the start of what will be a very special season. It can't be understated what the return of quarterback Frank Harris means to the Roadrunners 2023 potential. After practice today, Harris acknowledged where he was physically and mentally at last spring, saying it was the hardest time of his life. He couldn't walk or sleep. I mean, honestly, I was done probably like March and April. Um, I was ready to give it up, honestly. Um, I, I told Coach, uh, I told a couple of the players that I'm medically retiring, I'm done. Just want to move on with my life. It was just too hard for me at that point. And uh, just to see where I am now, just a testament to God. And uh, he does everything for a reason, and I'm just blessed to be here. Harris will hit the field for his final campaign with the Roadrunners beginning this Saturday at Houston and will be there. And he's been a ton to that team, so mm -hmm. hope he does well in his final season. Me too. Thank, Thank you, Mary. Thanks, Mary. Coming up after the break, we're getting an exclusive tour of Americana music icon Robert Earl Keene's ranch outside of Bandera. See the place where he writes his songs and hears stories about his start in the music industry. It's next in our latest Spreester Sessions sneak peek. Robert Earl Keane has a new album and he will play at Floors Country Store on Labor Day. And he also sat down exclusively with this guy. What a humble, <laughs> cool guy he is. I'm a fan, so this is a thrill for me. Robert Earl Keane has a new album out called Western Chill. So in addition to the Spreester Sessions interview that will live stream tonight at 7, he also gave us a tour of his ranch near Bandera, a place where he definitely goes to chill out. All right, you ready? Yeah. Okay, here we go. I had an office in Bandera, and my wife comes in one day and she says, we, I'm gonna go look at this ranch. And I said, all right. She says, you wanna go? I said, no. I said, we don't have any money. I don't know what you're going to look at a ranch for. These people were from California, and it turned out that the wife really hated living out here, and she wanted to go back to California. I made him an offer, and I didn't have any money. And I was thinking, what am I doing? I'm an idiot. I'm making an offer. I can't even back it up. And like about, I don't know, 15 days later, I got this check from this song, Copenhagen, yeah. that 
Jeff Foxworthy made a record of funny songs where he's singing. Nobody I know have ever seen, seen or heard this record. It turns out this record was only sold in truck stops, right? And he sold like four million of them. And I got a check for 50,000 bucks. So all of a sudden, I could back up what I, I offered yeah. this guy, you know? Yeah, this is, this is pretty awesome. Yeah. Howdy, I'm Robert O'Keen and welcome to Western Chill. You even got a smoke pit up here, huh? Yeah, yeah, but that, so that's Medina River over that way. And then Bandera's right on the other side of that hill there. And we shot a lot of stuff here. You see, I have this little cabin. It's only built for one. Perfectly situated on the western side of a hill. How many of your songs are autobiographical? I'd say a lot of them are. Yeah, I'd say, you know, 75% probably are autobiographical. I come from a very personal point of view. I mean, not necessarily in the song, but like when I'm when I'm putting together the song, I, I, I have like a you know a real personal thought or uh, a feeling about something or someone, and and so I, I go with that. I, I don't. It's hard to say. Um, it's it, it's sometimes it's hard to get uh, at a real real emotional. Feel if you're if you're not if you're not coming from a personal yep. place and um, yeah so this is where I wrote probably 80 percent of my songs. Well, what do you call this place? The scriptorium. Yeah, it, my wife named it that. Where you know like scriptorium as in writing place. What's this place mean to you? This is my place. This is where I can really get in touch with myself and get in touch with writing a song and. Uh, I usually what I do is I you know don't bring my phone there's no television here and um, I just have a bunch of deer sausage and white bread and I go out there and cook them out there is there a song when you were playing shows that you had to play well yeah the road if I didn't play the road I got a lot of plaque and, and I did that a few times you know people were really actually literally bang on the bus and scream and tell me I was like ruin their day and all that kind of stuff and I was like come on man I, look I just didn't play it one time you know? it's what I've been Snake barn, I thought they meant no. actual barn that had snakes in it. They did, used to, but it doesn't anymore. This is it. That's like a little vignette we set up for something I forgot that we did, like a couple of guys playing guitar or something. And then that's where we like do like a full blown band. We add a couple of risers and then, you know, got the lights here. And So that's where you did the concert for Western Chill. Yeah. So we keep that kind of for the smaller stuff and then this for like band stuff. That's a picture of Danny Hickle, who's the outlaw in Gringo Honeymoon, and that's the hovel that he lived in. How many of your albums have you done in here? Oh, just that Western Chill, but we've, you know, done a lot more, a lot more video kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But um, that doesn't mean we won't do another. Set lists? Yeah, these, uh, these are set lists. We just did different things where we were um, just shooting songs, you know. Chill Western right Chill, this is like Silver Spurs and Gold Bukila. It's like all Western stuff. And yeah. Birdie. That's Birdie. She's, a, she's totally feral cat. Totally feral cat. So that's pretty much the nickel tour, Steve. I, I, um, I, the, I appreciate the, it. The rest of it's just, you know, land and roads, basically. Awesome. Still so can't, cool. can't, I still can't believe I did that. I'm glad yeah. it's on video. <laughs> By the way, Western Chill is in a box. It's more than just an album. He's got a songbook. He's got a graphic novel. Wow. I mean, a lot of stuff come with this album that he 
sings and writes some songs. Members of his longtime band sing and wrote some of the songs on there. So it's so, pretty cool. So the graphic novel, are these his illustrations? It's, a, it's, it's his idea. He didn't illustrate them. He used a guy in, I think it was Lubbock or Amarillo, ah, who did okay. some to of the kind of uh, illustrations to, to bring it to life. But it goes along with the album. Yeah. It's kind of like the story of the album. So many times, just when I hear him talk, it brings back so many memories of his live concerts, you know, the live albums, and he's got a really cool show coming up at Floors. He does. By the way, it's a fan appreciation at Floors Country Store. It's free, but you have to get into the lottery. I think you can go to Floors or RobertEarlKeen.com and get in the lottery for the free show. It's him and his friends, kind of like his last show at Floors they did about a year ago. He's going to do it again. Fan appreciate say thank you to the fans out there because he says we're nothing without the fans. By the way, he says he doesn't get recognized unless he starts talking. <laughs> like I could what you see said. that. You, yeah. Exactly. You yeah. recognize his voice. Okay. I know sometimes artists don't like this question, but did he talk about a, a favorite song or favorite album that he's cut? Okay. So I'm not going to give away what he said, but okay. the favorite song he did tell me, it's a song I had not heard of. I had to look it up. So okay. it's, it's, it goes it's way intriguing. back in his catalog. And his favorite album he said he hadn't listened to because it was so hard for him to make. He hadn't listened oh. to until recently, and now he thinks it's his favorite. Wow. So both of those are in the Spreester Sessions. It's going to drop live tonight at 7 o'clock. And then, of course, you can see it on all of our streaming platforms. By the way, I also want to mention one other thing. What? He has a great cat. <laughs> And uh, this cat actually bonded with members of our crew. This is Handsome with producer Bill Taylor and I. And Handsome, during the interview, this research session, he jumps in on Robert O'Keen's lap, then he jumps on my lap. So <laughs> Handsome, also part of the uh, interview. but Hence Bill Taylor's yeah, face there. Yeah. I want to thank Robert O'Keen, though, for spending time with us. And you can catch this research sessions, like I said, starting at 7 o'clock tonight. And I just love that Copenhagen helped him buy that ranch. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be right back. Another hot one out there today. It was nice to see some big clouds from this view earlier this week. Not so much at this hour, Adam. You know, I think we'll have some big clouds again tomorrow afternoon. Ooh. So even if you don't get hit by one of the isolated showers, at least you'll get a little bit of shade for a period of time, which is really one of those things that you know, I took for granted every time we had it. And then we went through this summer, and then I went to yesterday. Had some shade for a few hours from the clouds. And I realized I'd been taking that natural shade for granted. Deep thoughts in the weather center here. I'm going to leave you with that. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's it, everybody. Good night. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. No, we do. I'm going to talk more about that chance of rain tomorrow, our future cast and latest on Hurricane Idalia in just a bit. Tonight, we know the names of the two San Antonio police officers shot during a manhunt last week. They are Officer Rhett Showquist and Officer Raul Chavez. Officer Showquist has been with SAPD for six years and Officer Chavez for four years. Both are now at home recovering. The San Antonio police searching for the person who shot a man walking home on the west side. Happened last night on Laurel Street near North Zarzamora. The victim says someone was following him in a dark colored vehicle shortly after someone in the car shot him in the leg. No arrests have been made. The trial of a woman accused of killing an aspiring rapper in San Antonio began today. Sasha Scar is accused of shooting and killing Martel De Ruin in 2021. Today, the prosecution showed security video of Scar walking down a hallway with a gun in her hand. Testimony continues tomorrow morning. ERCOT again asking people to save energy till 9 tonight after some mix up on energy conservation levels. So is CPS Energy. This morning, CPS actually listed today as a green day, meaning no problem. Well, hours later, after a warning from ERCOT, CPS Energy changed to a yellow day. We emailed CPS asking if it's on the same page as ERCOT. Haven't heard back yet. That's your 60 second recap. No matter the confusion, we could use any kind of break. And Adam, I don't know if you have any more deep thoughts, but the shade and the <laughs> big, the big always, clouds yeah. will certainly well, help. And, and to quote Robert Earl Keen, yes. we could use a western chill. <laughs> yeah, we could. <laughs> I'd take a northern chill right Something, now. Okay. Yeah. Just a chill. I'm going to get meteorological on you because if the wind's oh. coming out of the west, it's uh, adiabatic compression, and that means it warms up around here oh, and anywhere along the front range of the Rockies. There's the lesson. Yeah.
Thanks for that. Even in my days in North Dakota, so North Dakota slopes from west to east. It slopes downward a little bit to the Red River Valley of the north mm -hmm. between Minnesota and North Dakota. In turn, westerly winds in the state of North Dakota warm up. The air warms. As See, I knew you had more deep thoughts. I knew there was more. There's a lot going on inside this <laughs> noodle right here. All right, let's get right to our future cast. Let's move on here. We have a few isolated showers possible tomorrow. Little downpours and non-severe thunderstorms popping up. And when you look at the future cast, don't pay close attention to the exact location of these downpours. Just the mere fact that it's on board with, hey, a little bit of development. It looks like we'll have just enough instability. And with our northerly flow aloft, uh, enough energy to help kickstart kind of like what we had yesterday, but I don't think it'll be as much coverage and not as much in terms of accumulation. I mean, radar estimates were over an inch in parts of the west side of town and even parts of Bandera County. Robert Earl Keen got a little bit of rain yesterday on the ranch. Beautiful. Good to see. You could be fortunate again tomorrow, but I don't think the coverage is your odds aren't as great. It's the coverage isn't quite as good uh, for all of us around South Central Texas. Rain chances 20% tomorrow. I could see an argument for 30%, right? But we're giving it 20% and then no chance Thursday, Friday through the weekend. By this time next week, I do think we could see a little shift in our pattern that could bring back some daily isolated rain chances. Let's talk about wind across the state. And this is important with uh, ERCOT wanting us to conserve energy. I know they've had uh, some outages from natural gas and or coal in some parts of the state. We don't exactly know why or exactly where, but one thing that can offset it, of course, is our wind energy and wind production. But the wind hasn't been howling as much as it usually does, especially along the Gulf Coast, where we have so many wind farms and even in very, what is typically windy West Texas, where we have a lot of wind farms. And actually, I think the wind is going to get lighter the next couple of days. And Thursday, I think, is going to be the lightest wind across Texas. So those wind farms not producing as much as they potentially could those days, but they can be offset with other sources anyway. Highs today, really not that bad. 83 Amarillo, 93 Lubbock, Midland, 94, 100 Austin, 98 Dallas, 100 Corpus Christi, and 100 here in San Antonio. That is our 62nd 100 degree day so far this year. Of course, that's the most all time ever in San Antonio since records have been kept in the late 1800s. And this trend's going to continue and even 100 tomorrow up to 102 Thursday, Friday, then 100 degrees Saturday, Sunday and Monday. Quick look at Hurricane Idalia, Category 2 hurricane headed toward the Big Bend of Florida. That's that west coast there around the Big Bend between Panama City and Chiefland as a major hurricane late tonight, early tomorrow morning. Category 3, I think even possibly Category 4. We've got that 20% chance of a shower tomorrow. That's it, right near 100 for our highs. Otherwise, sunny and dry. By the way, not quite as warm the next few mornings at 72. You may notice that. That's something. Thanks, Adam. The buzz after the break. In the buzz today, an adorable six month old puppy is joining the ranks of the first responders who saved him. The mayor of East Haven, Connecticut, says animal control and firefighters rescued the beagle from a hot car. Yeah, now the city's adopting him and making him the fire station support dog. <laughs> he also has a new name to go along with his new home. Meet Riggs. After a community vote, the city says they received more than 7000 responses on what they should name the little guy. He is so cute. Yeah, very cute. Okay, to Dolly Parton now. She turned down tea with Kate Middleton. The country music legend was in the United Kingdom promoting her new album, Rockstar. In an interview, Parton told the BBC radio that she was so busy she had to decline the Princess of Wales invitation. Yeah, Dolly said she thought it was a very sweet and nice gesture for Kate to invite her to tea, and she said she wants to do it one of these days. <laughs> Parton said she felt so bad for saying no to the royal family, but she also joked that she knew the opportunity would not help her record sales because Kate would not promote her album. Always That's a businesswoman, that Dolly. And humorous. <laughs> yes. Very funny. We'll be right back. All right. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you back here on the Night Beat at 10.